वेरी वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग आई होप यू पीपल आर नॉट डिस्कसिंग बिहाइंड माई बैक एनीथिंग अबाउट मी नो आई गेट दिस डाउट समटाइम्स दैट यू नो नाउ विद दी सोशल मीडिया आफ्टर आई होल्ड दिस एफ बी सेशन पीपल आर एक्चुअली फॉर्मिंग ग्रुप्स एंड दे आर गॉसिपिंग अबाउट मी आई डोंट नो how to check that out because i will never come to know isn't it that's what suspicion is all about see one thing i want to tell you is that uh, when we talk about uh, suspicion it is not necessarily a bad uh, thing somehow the, uh, whenever this word suspicion is used no people immediately say oh he is suspicious person actually you have to be suspicious you cannot survive in this world if you are not suspicious right if you just if you are so innocent that you trust anybody and everybody and uh, then they take you for a ride they cheat you and then you realize oh i never doubted this uh, person so what i am trying to tell you is that suspicion is not necessarily bad as in so many things stress is not necessarily bad taking up some you know activities or entertainment is not uh, bad there are so many things which are not bad provided you understand what the limitations are what you should do and what you should not uh, uh, do so let's start with uh, uh, suspicion and then i'm going to go on to the main topic and that is jealousy as far as suspicion is uh, uh, concerned as i mentioned to you it is good to be suspicious not to be so naive that anybody comes and says anything and i believe them and then i get uh, into trouble for myself but when it becomes a problem or becomes an issue is when i become overtly suspicious anything and everything like we always say no anything which you know goes beyond a certain limit obviously become bad food is excellent not only excellent it is a means of survival but if i become a glutton and i start eating more and more and more obviously it's going to be problems uh, uh, on it so something even as basic as food which is a necessity of life can become bad now the same thing applies to uh, suspicion when a person you know starts getting suspicious of anything and everything when there is nothing to back it up that is one thing which i am very very particular about that when you are suspicious of somebody let's say that you uh, know shall can i trust my friend and give him some money can i trust my employee or my domestic help can i trust x y z whenever that happens you have to think in a critical manner you are aware no those 10 life skills who's 10 life skills which are essential for a good quality of life one of those 10 is critical thinking to be able to critically evaluate any issue that comes in front of you so here is this friend asking for a loan here is this person who wants to get into a business deal with me but i have to give the services first and money will come in later here is this very close family member and i am not 100% sure whether the loyalties of that family member are with me or uh, uh, not now if you have developed your critical thinking you will realize that you will be able to bifurcate and say yes here i need to be careful i should not you know allow this person to go ahead and do what they want i should put in counter checks or i should limit myself to this i should not go beyond uh, uh, that on the other hand if i find that i am becoming suspicious of anything and everything or i am becoming suspicious because of one bad experience i did a money deal with somebody known to me and that person cheated uh, me after that 
if I become suspicious of anybody who comes with a financial deal, how will I be able to survive? So when the second person comes to me and says, okay, here is a business deal, can we do this financial transaction? What I need to do is to keep aside that negative memory that I had, that I was cheated by somebody. On the other hand, very critically evaluate the proposal that this person is giving me. Critically evaluate him as a person. Does he look trustworthy? Does his body language, you know, put me at ease that yes, he's a genuine uh, person? If we focus on that, then our suspicions, if any, will be having some meaning in it. And then I can be a little careful and I can even say, no, I do not want to have uh, yeah, you know, anything to uh, do with this person. I'd rather avoid this uh, uh, issue or this person, things uh, you know, of that uh, manner. Now, what happens is if I allow my suspicions to gain more and more, if I allow myself to become suspicious of every person who comes to me, it becomes like an addiction, like any other addiction, anything which becomes so ingrained in me that the first thing that I do is suspicion. You will even come across people. Somebody comes up and gives a big smile and says, hi, how are you? And goes away. And this person says, why did she give me such a big grin? Why such a big, how are you? Now, that is the type of suspicion that I am talking about today. What has happened is, for various reasons, this person has made suspicion as a part of his or her life. And like I always keep reminding you, some of these things start in childhood. We don't even realize it. Bad role modeling, for example. If I have a parent who is of a very suspicious character, I am observing my parent very closely, his or her behavior, what the person says, mannerism, so many things. And for anything and everything, if I realize that this parent of mine does not trust anybody, feels that people can take you for granted, people can even cheat you if you are not careful. As a growing child in my innocent years, it gets so strongly ingrained in me that I lose that power of critical thinking, one of the ten basic life skills. And instead of doing critical thinking and evaluating what are the possibilities, whether I should take that step forward or not, using logic into it, instead of doing that, what I do is start becoming suspicious of everybody. And that can cause a lot of issues. Now, nobody you know, no, believes uh, anything. In fact, Leela has asked the same question. When some close relative has cheated financially very badly, how to believe others? That is what I, I was just mentioning a minute back. This is how it gets ingrained in us. One close relative cheated me very badly financially. Does it mean that I condemn entire humanity? Does it mean that I have to now become suspicious of anybody? The moment I have to do even a 10 rupee financial transaction, should I start questioning uh, people? Now that has got nothing to do with the others around me. It is to do with myself. Remember that. I was walking on the road and a reckless driver came and I had a very bad accident. I broke my leg. I was in hospital for two months. I have recovered now. Does it mean that I stopped walking on the road? Does it mean that I shut myself in the house? How can I believe? People, anybody will drive irrationally and anybody will come and hit me. So I am going to stop walking on the roads. That is what happens when you become suspicious. There are two things in answer to what Leela has asked that when some close relative has cheated you financially, how to believe others. The first is, please, 
first evaluate why you got cheated badly. This is something which I keep reminding people. It may sound very cruel if you've already been cheated very badly and you're already suffering from it. When I tell you that what was your contribution to being cheated, people get upset. Hey, this guy cheated me, man. I will trusted him and I did everything nice. I never had any bad intentions. I just went by the flow and I gave him whatever the financial things and this person cheated me. Now, why are you asking me about it? I'll tell you why. Because that person has cheated you, taken away the money and is enjoying himself. But what about you? Your life has to go on. Your financial transactions have to go on. Your relationships have to go on. So first thing that you need to do is to learn a lesson from what happened. And that can happen only if, like I told you, you do some critical thinking. What was my contribution? You'll be amazed when we do this evaluation. No? Many a time it comes out that he had shown some indications that he's not a trustworthy person, but I overlooked it. I was getting a doubt whether you know I should trust him with such a big amount. But the way he started talking to uh, me, he convinced me. Now, if I got convinced by a trickster, even if it's a close relative, that is a shortcoming in me. I have allowed myself to become vulnerable. It is like I'm going out in the heavy rain without an umbrella or a raincoat or any protection. The chances of my falling sick are much higher. No? So if I have to go out in the rain, there's nothing wrong in just carrying an umbrella, or putting on a raincoat and then going through. Nothing will happen to you. Those are the precautions that we need to take, which we you know, forget. Many a time, suspicion comes in. Firstly, as I told you, childhood, upbringing, if I've had elders who were uh, like that. Secondly, the case, like Leela said just uh, uh, now, when some one person whom you trusted very much has let you down. So what happens is that you say, when somebody so close to me can cheat me, then others will obviously cheat uh, uh, me. That is what you need to understand that just because one person has cheated you, you cannot put everybody in the same. Sometimes I even ask them, turn around to yourself and say, do I go about cheating people in financial matters? No, of course not. I'll never do that. So do you mean to say that out of 7 billion human beings in this world, you are the only trustworthy person? No, no, I'm not saying that, but generally people, yes, generally there are a lot of people who are not to be trusted. It is your ability, your skill, your intentions and your efforts to go through in detail and find out who can be trusted and who cannot be trusted. Otherwise, we go into this suspicious mode and then I started becoming suspicious of everybody. And also remember when other people feel that I am being suspicious about them, I'm not trusting them, they withdraw. They have bad things to say about me. They go about telling people that this person, you know, doesn't trust, he's so suspicious, he's like this, he's like that. And my relationship with other people also gets spoiled and I start moving more into isolation and loneliness, which I have been talking about. Okay, Bemem says an immediate family uh, um, uh, of mine has trust issue and always suspicious of everything. Me being sensitive individual, the behavior affects my mental well-being. I too become suspicious of myself. Like what if the person is taking me as an accused of losing their stuff, etc. It hampers my mental well-being. Obviously, whenever you are accosted with such a person, how do you, you know, go about either if it is your own self, how do you help yourself? If it is somebody like what my men said, how do you help that person? I will come to that in a few minutes. Let me first also uh, tell you that if you have, you know, unwanted fears, if you are the type of person who is scared of small, small things, this phobias as we call it, no? I am afraid of the dark. I am afraid of dogs. I am afraid of water. Anybody who has any form of phobia is likely to be more suspicious. So please check yourself at the first level whether I have phobias. And if you want to help somebody, 
who has got this type of attitude help to see whether that person has any uh, you know ph phobias also remember suspicion of strangers for example a new person is saying that this is what i uh, want and you immediately become uh, suspicious this is because of that you know wrong belief that do not trust strangers that's what our uh, elders told us when we were small children you remember you can trust all uncle auntie neighbor known people but do not trust you know other uh, people punam has asked what's the reason for jealousy in between family members i've not yet come to jealousy punam give me a few minutes and i'm going to talk about uh, jealousy after i complete that this so remember that if this happens also remember if i am uh, uh, of a suspicious nature as i grow older i tend to become more and more and more suspicious because i start getting isolated you know the world seems to be overtaking me the youngsters seem to be able to do everything i am not able to do anything and that is what increases so please be aware that as age catches up with you if you have allowed suspicion to become a part of you it can in increase then you start feeling victimized you take on that victim's uh, uh, role and then you start you know withdrawing from people getting more and more you know isolated one of the worst suspicion that i have come across is this suspicion of your spouse we come across day in and day out people who should otherwise be having a good relationship marital relationship but they become very suspicious of the spouse and that leads to a lot of issues so that is one area that where i tell the person you please look inward to see what makes you so suspicious if there is something concrete i told you yes i have evidence to believe that my spouse is doing something which is comes in the category of cheating me or letting me down then yes you have a right to be suspicious but in many cases suspicion is only vague and not based on any facts okay so with that uh, let me move on to how suspicion you know leads to jealousy in very very often and that's the reason why i uh, you know sort of coupled these two topics uh, uh, together there's another aspect to it which uh, you must uh, um, uh, understand how is uh, suspicion different from gut feeling gut feeling is just an instinct or a sixth sense or something it nothing to do with suspicion suspicion is when you stop trusting people remember that gut feeling comes from within and it comes for anything and everything so that is not uh, the uh, issue in fact i always tell people you know, that you must believe in your instincts or your gut feeling or you know, that sort of uh, uh, which comes out of that critical uh, uh, thinking where there is no logic but suspicion is always you know trying to withdraw or trying to become negative that is what i am talking about and that leads to possessiveness also i was telling about close family members or something the moment i become suspicious i also start becoming possessive jealous i start you know, you know start withdrawing from the normal interactions also remember that jealousy is not a proof of love jealousy masquerades as love <clears throat> i love x so much and that is why i don't want x to be talking to somebody meeting somebody doing different things i want to possess somebody nobody can possess another human being be it your spouse be it your child be it anybody but somewhere if you start getting this you know feeling that when i am uh, uh, you know possessive exactly that's what happens reena says why are people jealous when strangers become best friends because there is something deep down lacking in me that i see that strangers are becoming best friends and i feel left out let them become best friends how does it matter i told you there are 7 billion human beings you can find seven good people in that and make them your uh, best friends but when i find this sort of instinct what reena said about uh, you know why people become jealous when strangers become best friend i have to look within all these jealousies i have to look within i also know of many people who you know when they become jealous 
they take up this attitude. Let's say a boy becomes very jealous, his girlfriend is suspicious about her and his, all those things are happening. And that girl turns around and says, sorry, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't think this relationship is working out. I want to move on. You know, one of the things that comes up is, okay, even if she doesn't marry me, I won't allow her to marry anybody else. Even if she doesn't want to be my girlfriend, I will not allow her to be the girlfriend of any other uh, boy. Now, these are very, very destructive. So all our energies get, uh, uh, you know, diverted to this jealousy. It can be very debilitating. And if we tackle it properly, it can be overcome. So as I told you, I'm going to give you a few interesting tips on how to overcome when we find or even if you're trying to help somebody the basic principles remain the same whether it is for yourself or for anybody else so i just listed down a few very significant points based on you know years and years of exposure experiences observing people learning from them and i have sort of put it in a nutshell which sunita has made into a very nice attractive slide that how do you deal with suspicion and jealousy what is the first step? Accept that you are feeling jealous and analyze why. Stop focusing on the other person. The moment we become jealous, we are only focusing on the other person or we are in denial. Who said I'm jealous? I'm not jealous. Yeah, he's having a good time. Let him enjoy. Okay, he's got success. I'm happy for uh, him. As long as you are in denial, you will not be able to do anything about it. And as long as you have not done an analysis of why I felt I deserved this girlfriend. I felt I deserved this promotion. I felt that I have been so nice to this person and this person instead of being nice to me is being nice to somebody else. So let us analyze why am I feeling jealous? Then what do you do? Talk it over to somebody. Believe me, it makes a world's difference. I'm not saying it because I do counseling. You don't even have to have formal counseling uh, per se. Just a one trusted person, relative, friend, whoever it is, confess that I am feeling jealous. Even when we go to talk to somebody, no, what we do is we start talking about the other person. See, I trusted that person so much. He has let me down. He is doing this. He is misbehaving with me. He has cheated me. My feelings, I am feeling jealous of this person. Once you have that courage to confess that even to one person, then you are ready to move on. And that one person did not give you advice or solve your problems. You feel lighter. Then what do you do? Explore your past shortcomings disappointments and unrelated failures. This is what I answered when Leela also brought up the point that if I've been cheated by a close family member. So that is my past disappointment. Now, am I connecting or unnecessarily linking these uh, two? Is my jealousy, my suspicion higher because of what happened in the other uh, uh, areas? Am I feeling incomplete? Am I feeling inadequate? Because I am not able to get what I want. To reinforce that, you should list out your achievements. In other fields, you have to reinforce to yourself that I am not a failure. I have an identity of my own. I, have, I can do things on my own. I have a good track uh, record. And this should be done on a continuous basis. See, yesterday I achieved this. Last week I did that. I managed to make a name for myself in this. I succeeded in this attempt that I did. If you have done that, you can understand that by becoming jealous, I am considering myself as inferior. Jealousy is like a confession that I am not capable. Otherwise, why should I feel jealous? Okay, somebody is good. I can be gooder, no? Or I can be better in something else. I don't have to compete in the same thing. This awakening, you have to drill this into uh, you. 
and understand that someone loving another is not a reflection on you. A son grows up, gets married and is badly in love with his wife. The mother starts feeling jealous. I gave birth to him, I brought him up, I did so much for 30 years, I looked after him. Now see how he is chasing his wife and not taking care of me and he has completely abandoned me. So someone loving another is not a reflection on me. I don't have to feel jealous or uh, possessive. These are two completely different uh, you know, compartments. And also similarly, not being chosen by the other person may be very many reasons. This is, comes out so often when a person feels disappointed, let down. And we only internalize it. Why this person is not responding to me? Why this person is not trusting me? Why this person is not loving me? The person may have his or her own individual reasons which have got nothing to do with you. So if you can sit and analyze what went wrong, why that person did so many things. Each individual has his own restrictions, his own commitments, his own responsibilities. And try and befriend the rival and see how he won that game. Empathy, put yourself in the other person's shoes and try to understand how and what that person did. Learn from people who, according to you, have been more successful or have taken away your rights. Instead of sulking and being angry and saying nasty things about that person, go closer to the person, make the person talk and try and understand. You will learn so much about life skills. You will learn so much about relationships. And you will learn so much about how to deal with situations, including most important, practice self love. If I don't love myself, why should anybody else love me? Just because somebody else is not loving me and is paying more attention to somebody, that doesn't mean I have to feel inferior or I have to uh, you know, feel pulled down or anything like that. And that brings me to the last uh, point. And that is what has been my performance and that it is not a reflection on my self-worth. This thing, you'll be surprised when I say that suspicion, jealousy, is more to do with myself than about others. Like Lila says, professional jealousy affects work of the sincere ones a lot. I would like those, in inverted commas, sincere persons to ask themselves, if I am a committed person, if I am sincere, if I am professionally competent, why is my work being affected by somebody else's uh, work? Even if I've, let's say, got a horrible boss, or I've got a colleague who, you know, backbites me and says nasty things and takes credit for work which I have done, so be it. Am I not a complete person by myself? Am I not competent to do what I'm uh, doing? Can I not ignore the person and continue to do whatever I am uh, uh, doing? If I have that ability in me, believe me, it will be very rare and very infrequent that I will even feel that pang of suspicion, jealousy, which are such destructive uh, uh, things. M.M. says this individual is very proactive, very alert. But when it comes to extreme that affects me personally, I am no-nonsense person. I'll do my things, you do your things, let coexist, etc. I am affected mentally from different aspects, but going to live with this individual as long as I live on this earth cannot disown our responsibility for sure. Yes, day in and day out, we have very close relationships from whom you just cannot get away. Don't, don't even make that attempt. But don't be frustrated about it. See, within those circumstances, what I can do. Supposing I'm a very poor person, I can only afford a one-room house. Everybody else is enjoying themselves, 2 BHK, 3 BHK, nice, spacious living. I can go on feeling jealous about that other people. I can go on feeling bad about myself. I can go on feeling, you know, suspicious. How did he earn so much money? Why did he become rich? How did he become that? 
But if I learn to adapt myself and say, okay, Pap, this is what it is. I right now, uh, underline the words right now, my ability is only to have a one room house. I will grow later. Maybe I'll overtake them someday. I don't know. But as of today, I'm going to make the most of it. This is what helps you to move on in life. And this is what we will be, you know, discussing, including Rani's uh, very relevant point that those who have insecurity will suspect a lot. All these things I will reply to you, as they say in the TV series, break keba. So here is Seema going to give you a quick little inputs as to what's happening in Banjara, and I'll be back. Yes, like Ali has been talking about so many aspects, so many nuances to human behavior. There are so many things to actually sit down and think about, to reflect uh, upon, to introspect. And sometimes, you know, you may not be able to do it yourself. You may need a person. Uh, a counselor is a great idea. When we say a counseling session, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, a major problem in the in your life that you are looking to handle. It could just be to understand yourself better. So, you know, in Banjara, uh, counseling is free. We have uh, excellent trained counselors here. So please feel free to come here, fix up your appointment and come and meet any one of us. Uh, you know, we have a, a fleet of counselors. So please uh, do not hesitate. Please come down. I'm telling you, it really works. All of us need counselors. Even we counselors use our buddy counselors uh, to keep on, you know, uh, it's like a mirror, right? It's like a mental mirror in front of you who's helping you to uh, reflect your own thoughts and feelings. So that's where a counselor comes in handy. And uh, yes, uh, I keep talking about our DCS program. Uh, as a student, I will tell you of DCS, you know, not just uh, the fact that you can uh, do a lot of self uh, uh, reflection and a lot of self awareness comes out of it through this program, but you also learn uh, to deal with a lot of aspects of human relationships. Uh, many of these, which we take up one after the other in our FP lives also. So many nuances to this, uh, those kind of, uh, let's say something like assertiveness, something like forgiveness, those personality development topics are also taken in our DCS, taken up in our DCS program, apart from, of course, the skills of being a counselor. And we take you through the lifespan. We take you through, you know, right from children, right up to grief counseling, different nuances of counseling. So the whole program is about starting from self, moving on to your close relationships, your family, friends, uh, the different, uh, you know, equations and how your uh, responding to things instead of reacting to things and all of that changes the dynamics of your existing relationships and finally how to reach out to the society in large through counseling so that is where dcs uh, is uh, a, an excellent program of late i've been getting some calls uh, where uh, people are assuming that the admissions are closed because last 20 this is we are in the 23rd year this time last 22 years admissions do get closed by uh, july uh, but this time, because of the lockdowns and various other things, uh, we have started with a weekend and weekday program, but we still have another batch coming up. So if you are keen to work on yourself and finally reach out to others, here's an excellent program. Please reach out to me. My number is uh, given there. Our office numbers are given there. We'll be more than happy to tell you about the program. Over to Ali. You know what I enjoy most about uh, these Saturdays? Not the topic and preparing for it and looking at uh, you know different aspects of what I'm going to talk, but the inputs I get in the chat box, some of them are so innovative. They make me sit up and think. Sometimes I even jot down some notes and I keep it that after this is over, let me introspect on it and let me improve on it. That's the attitude I want you to take up. Even when it um, uh, comes to something simple as, you know, like, for example, Rani says, those who have insecurity will be suspecting a lot. Again, what did I say? We need to look inward. Am I feeling insecure? 
am I feeling that I am not competent enough? Let's say I'm a senior employee in some profession and I start feeling that I'm getting outdated. Youngsters are better than me. Now, if that insecurity comes in, I will become suspicious. What were they talking? Why are they gossiping? Are they saying something about me? Are they trying to have some conspiracy against me? And then the jealousy comes in. Look at this fellow, you know, he is half my age and he is drawing such and such salary and he is doing this. So insecurity does have a very uh, important role to uh, play. Okay, Benman says, I am adapting too much and I started losing my identity in the journey. Yes, Benman, this happens. We must, you know, prevent this sort of thing from happening. So if I realize that I am the victim of somebody who is jealous, or if I realize that I am being jealous uh, unnecessarily, you will realize this one very important aspect that uh, Benman said that you will actually find that you are losing your identity in the journey. Life's journey is long. We don't know how much it will be. I can, you know, pop off tomorrow. You may live for the next 80 years. Since we cannot predict that, what we can do is to keep fine tuning. That's why I say that, you know, this is one of the basic life skills that we have to acquire. The more I balance my creative and my critical thinking, the less are the chances that I'll get affected by anything called jealousy and suspicion and all this. Is feeling jealous innate behavior says no, no, it is not. It is a learned behavior. Nobody is born jealous in this world. Nobody is born suspicious in this uh, world. We pick up these habits, unfortunately. And how to overcome it? I just gave you seven or eight good points step by step. If you have not been able to pay focus on it, this uh, recording remains on the Facebook page. Later, when you are free, just move on to that part of it and make a note of those seven or eight points that I have uh, given you and start practicing them or help anybody else who is going through a situation to practice that. Surika says, how can one build an emotional wall against those close ones who are suspicious of her uh, uh, intent? Yes. I have, let's say, somebody who is close to uh, me and who has got this very suspicious uh, uh, nature. And that, as we discussed, could actually be affecting my whole identity. It can be pulling me down. So what we need to do is exactly what Surekha said, build an emotional wall. How do you build that emotional uh, wall? By first looking inward. Is there any truth in what this person is saying? This jealous person is putting me down. This person is going around telling everybody that I am no good. But this person is directly telling me that no, you are not capable. First thing is, is there any truth in what the person is saying? Even if it is 5% or 10%. Acknowledge that. Yes, this is an area of shortcoming. Everybody need not be perfect or absolutely 100%. So I also have this shortcoming. Yes, I agree. And I'll work on it. I will improve that where I have my shortcoming. But other areas where I do not have and this person is constantly bombarding me with it. I need to move away emotionally by building that wall. And that comes out of simple techniques like thought stopping, diverting the uh, mind, doing some meditation or some relaxation uh, techniques rationalizing the other person yes maybe the other person is insecure that is why she's going on you know trying to harass me by this so i rather than feeling angry with the person i will actually feel pity on that person that person doesn't seem to be able to run his own life and that's why that person is focusing on me and trying to uh, attack me but i know what i am and i can move on one more thing you can do to build that emotional wall is to get other people who are, you know, frank and open with uh, uh, you and tell them to please, you know, give me a realistic opinion about what is true and what is not. When you get that, you can counterbalance the things. Okay, I know people are jealous of uh, me. 
how do I handle them? That's too generic a question, Noor. We can't generalize and say, okay, yes, yes we are surrounded by jealous people. There's no doubt about it. And more so, if I am one of those quiet, determined person, you know, who doesn't impose on anybody, who doesn't show off, but who has certain qualities, who has certain uh, achievements, and who goes on doing some good work, you know what happens? Whether you like it or not, there are going to be jealous people. One of my young students who has joined an organization and has started doing excellent work. She's taking the lead in so many ways and she is moving forward. She is being proactive. She goes and discusses with her seniors and says, sir, can we do this? If they are a little doubtful, do you think it will work? So give me the permission. I will do it. I will take the responsibility and I will take the blame if somebody go, thing goes wrong. I will show it to you. So she had taken some suggestions, advice from me for uh, some project that she is doing. And I was observing uh, her and she did an excellent job. She succeeded to a very great extent. When she told me that I'm so happy and she thanked me for whatever little contribution I had made, I replied to her saying that, please be aware that since in a short time you have achieved so much, there are going to be very jealous and envious people around you. So start building that emotional ball and start protecting yourself right now. She didn't understand what I'm saying. She said, you know, why should anybody feel this, this, this? Two days later, she sent me a long email saying, Ali, are you a clairvoyant? How did you know that this is what is going to happen? Yesterday, we had a meeting in which a couple of people just took off on me. They tried to say so many nasty things about uh, uh, me, overlooking what I have actually achieved over the years. And I was wondering, what have I done wrong to them? Why are they saying this? I said, see, I'm not a clairvoyant, but I know I understand human behavior. And that is what I'm saying, that you have to have, you know, that uh, thing of understanding that this is going to happen. Jealous and suspicious is always a positive learning for me. They motivate me, make me to become strong. Is it okay? It's not just okay. It is amazing. It is wonderful. Any negative experience, anything that we suffer because of other people's behavior, the moment I say that I'm going to use it as a stepping stone to come up, there's a very nice little story about no, Henry the donkey. There was this donkey in, in a farm. He used to be roaming around doing whatever work his master said. And one fine day, what happened was there was an empty well with no water, a deep well. And this donkey's foot slipped and he landed in the bottom of the well. He didn't break his bones or anything, thankfully. He had a lot of aches and pains, but then he got up. Now he's looking up. And he cannot climb. And he started screaming and braying. The farmer came and had a look and was very shocked that my beloved donkey has fallen down. So he wanted to lift him up. He tried many ways. There's no way of lifting him up. If he throws down a rope, how can a donkey catch a rope and come up uh, uh, with that? If he throws down a ladder, what can the donkey cannot climb a uh, ladder? He called his neighbors or the other farmers came. All of them had a look and all of them said, no, nothing can be done. So what will happen? This donkey will starve himself to death. He'll die a very painful death. The owner of the farmer said, I don't like to see my donkey, you know, slowly going painfully towards death. Let me at least put him to sleep by giving him a dignified death. So he called his neighbors and said, come, we will start shoveling mud into this well. And that mud will cover him up. He'll suffocate inside and he'll die peacefully within minutes. We'll give him a dignified death. And they started shoveling the mud. This donkey saw the mud falling on him and he started shaking the mud. And he started climbing on top of the mud. More mud is falling down and more our friend is climbing on that. With the result, 
that as the mud kept piling on and on, the donkey started coming higher and higher. At one point, he realized that I'm just a few feet away from the ground. He took one massive jump and he came out. Now, at the mental, emotional level, all of us can do that. When somebody throws dirt at you, they are jealous of you. They are doing backbiting. They are doing gossiping. They are trying to purposely put you down. You can use that mud to climb higher. You learn so many things in life and use it literally as a stepping stone. Here's a lovely slide that Smitha has put it. Shake it off and step up. Right? Okay. What is the next uh, question? I take it as a uh, uh, lesson and protect myself. Exactly. That's what I uh, told uh, what Lila is doing. Practically, I feel all of us should be doing something very uh, uh, similar. That we should try to do whatever best we uh, uh, can. Yes, Hindu has got a quote in her cabin behind me which shows the same attitude. So you put up that sort of thing, maybe, you know, a, a good reminder like that. Put up a little poster like that donkey's poster, which Sunita showed you just now. Put up something of that uh, sort. So every time something happens, you say, shake it off and step up. And because of other people throwing dirt, you're actually progressing in life. You're going higher and higher in uh, uh, life. It is possible. We just have to have the right attitude the right resilience and that self-worth and self-confidence which will not allow me to be influenced by others and be put down by others. I should not allow anybody else to control my life. And similarly, I should not allow my life to be controlled by these negative things. I may have imbibed them because, like I told you, Either it could be upbringing, elders, or somebody has impacted that into me. Or it could even be because I had a bad experience, as one or two people shared over here. Either way, I need to work on uh, it. Parvin says, what if someone gets suspicious? Whenever someone says something good to her, I feel very sad for such people. Somebody is saying something good, and that other person is becoming... Uh, uh, suspicious. Let's take a wild guess. Why do you think that happens? Because she has probably been the victim of people who tried to flatter her. People who said nice things to uh, her and they later on she found out that they were only bluffing. They were actually being sarcastic. Behind her back, they were saying horrible things. In front of her, they were being very nice to uh, her. Now, like I said, if one, two, three people have done that to you, firstly, introspect, why did I allow that to happen? Why is it that I could not make out by their expression, by their body language, by their choice of words, by the choice of the circumstances in which they were trying to praise me? Why is it that I could not? find out that they are actually jealous people who are trying to flatter or cheat me. Second is, even if I have been cheated by these three uh, people or five people or two people, the whole world does not constitute them. There are so many nice, wonderful people. The whole world actually has this, what I refer to as a silent majority. People who don't interfere, people who don't show up, people who don't make any claims. But they are there all around you. You want to befriend them, you take the first step and they will respond. But they will not come and intrude into your uh, uh, life because they have no axe to grind. They have no vested uh, interest. It is up to me to look for such people. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm trying to look for better uh, people you know, who I can interact uh, with. Nur is asking, can jealousy exist between spouses? Yes, very much. And it can be very devastating. You know, a spouse, as we say, is a life partner, right? It's a very close and a multi-dimensional relationship. And if you find that 
one of the spouse or both may be sometimes become jealous. It can really affect. Whereas a spouse is supposed to be your counterpart. You see, for example, there are many households where the husband is the breadwinner and the wife is the homemaker. They are complementing each other. Now the wife doesn't earn a single rupee. She is a homemaker. Now can she get jealous of the husband and say, see, why is he being paid such a high salary? Why is he getting a promotion? Why is he going up? And vice versa. Let's say that the children will, uh, you know, go on and on and on uh, running behind mother. They connect so closely to mother and daddy comes and they are just hi, hello, and they leave it off. Now, is it right for the husband to become jealous of the wife? Why is it that, you know, children are only running behind her and giving her so much love and affection? Because she has taken on that role, a full-time role of homemaker. She is available to them, which you are not. So you have to make those sacrifices, understand and rationalize uh, uh, that. Gayatri is asking what's the difference between envy and jealousy. See, envy can be for even with somebody whom you don't know. If I just come across, let's say, some um, media statement saying that such and such person has become the 100th millionaire or billionaire in uh, the uh, country, I can feel envious of that uh, person. I have in the neighborhood one person who was living in a small house. He broke it down and he's made it into a luxurious multi-story building. I can feel envious. I don't even know what's the background or whatever it is. So it's got nothing to do with me. It's got nothing to do with the relationship. But jealousy comes in when I feel personally and directly affected. My brother with whom I was competing, whom I was helping, who is not as capable as me, and I always helped him. Now, suddenly he has got big money and he has built a big bungalow and I am still living in a small house. That is what is jealousy. Dr. Shirin says, does ignoring jealous people and just keep moving on help or hinder? It depends on who they are, Shirin. If they are vague people around you, if it is some neighbor or some acquaintance or some very distant relative, yes, I agree that you can ignore such people. But believe me, if it is somebody close, somebody with whom your life is intertwined, somebody who has an effect on your emotions, then it is not wise to just keep moving and uh, you know ignore whatever the person things can get bad and that person if that person has that intention to you know cause you harm by the jealousy that person will be emboldened and empowered to do more and more so sometimes it is better to nip it in the bud when it comes to close relationships right Arvind says, my sister gets suspicious of my motive when I give her a positive stroke, saying that she is doing a good job and taking care of her schizophrenic husband, which is a challenge. Now, I don't know your sister and I would not like to comment on her, but a very general comment in such a situation, possibly. Visualize a situation where there are two sisters, okay? One of them lands up with a husband who's got a mental illness. Obviously, her life is shattered. And if she is a committed Indian lady, she won't just walk out on him just because he is suffering from that uh, illness or something. No? But she is painfully aware that the rest of my life I am going to suffer. Whereas my sister is enjoying life. She has got a good spouse. She has got everything going. So it is very natural that the person becomes uh, you know, suspicious and also jealous. So here is the sister trying to push her up, giving her some positive... Uh, uh, strokes, but this one is getting more and more suspicious. Since Parveen has brought up this uh, uh, point, I want to also tell you, leave you with a very interesting uh, thought. Very often, we feel jealous of those who help us. Can you believe that? Jealousy is higher when you have a close person helping me on a continuous basis. So if there is this lady who has a sister who's doing very well in life, who's happy, contented, married, children, everything going well. And she decides, since my sibling is having a tough time, I'm going to go out of the way to help her in whatever ways I can. The jealousy factor is likely to go higher. I'll give you an example. 
Supposing I live in a small uh, colony where everybody is lower middle class, we have small, small houses, we go around on a cycle or a, on a scooter or whatever it is, and we are all living that type of life. One person suddenly gets into huge money. He builds a palatial house, he gets a you know, imported Mercedes car and a chauffeur and security guard and everything. And he's got these tinted glasses. His car comes out of the gate and zooms away. He doesn't even lower the glass or say hello to anybody in the locality. He's become a very stuck up man. Initially, I'll feel very angry with this person. Till yesterday, we were friends, we were equals. Just because he has run into money now, he doesn't even want to acknowledge. I'm sure going past, he saw me standing over there. He could have just lowered the glass and waved out to me and gone. He's not even doing that. Forget about doing anything else. But what happens is that it is easy to give up on such people. Once, twice, three times, you curse him and you say nasty things about him. And then you start ignoring him. Let's say another neighbor picks up some little extra money and buys a car. And he comes and says, I see that you have to you know, catch a bus and go all the way to Makri Circle and then catch another bus from there to go to your office. I also more or less go at the same time. So what I thought is, I'll give you a lift up to Makri Circle. From there, you'll get a direct bus to your uh, uh, office. So if you are ready by about 8.45 or 8.50, I'll pick you up uh, and we'll go. You're very thankful. You're very happy. Now, slowly what happens is when you go to office and people say, hey, you have to change two buses and come, you say, no, no, no. My neighbor drops me to make the circle, so I get a direct bus. What a nice neighbor you have here. I wish we had such uh, neighbors. No, nowadays, who helps people like that? He goes off. He must be a really wonderful person. It tricks you a little. Going beyond, you are having your breakfast and you tell your wife, give me another extra idli. And the wife looks out on the window and said, no, 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 that neighbor has already come. Don't make him wait. Poor fellow is giving you a lift. Forget about the idli. Go. You say that my wife is more you know, concerned about that neighbor than about me. Now, when that happens, it's a big blow to your ego and to your self-esteem. So what you do is you start cooking up things to become envious or jealous of this person. How did he buy the car? Maybe he takes drives. Otherwise, with his salary, how would he have been able to do it. I start, you know, attributing motives to that person by becoming jealous of that person. So keep this in mind that when you are helping somebody like Parvinda uh, said, you have to be careful that just because you are helping the person on a continuous basis, the person should not feel that trick that I am the one at the receiving end all the time. This person is the high and mighty always giving. So therefore, I don't like this person and I will use some you know, roundabout ways to put the person uh, down. No such jealous people lose good friends in the long run. Definitely they do. They don't realize uh, that, that in the long run, when you are jealous, people start slowly identifying uh, it and they start you know, looking at the person and saying, I better keep away from this person. I would not like to be closely associated. I would not like to have any transactions with this uh, person. And that leads to, pardon me for repeating for the nth time, more and more you are headed towards loneliness. Suspicious people, jealous people, are much more prone to this pandemic called loneliness, which many of us are ignoring or not giving sufficient importance to, thinking that it will pass off. It won't apply to me. I am not a victim to this. No. You are, I am, every one of us is. But the beauty of it is that we have been taught so many practical, simple life skills. All we have to do is to practice them and we will see that we can overcome. Despite all our efforts, if I find that I am still getting stuck with suspicion and jealousy or I am stuck with a person who is very close to me and who has this suspicion and jealousy, 
what do I do about it? So as we wind up today's uh, session, I will request Sunita to once more show you those slides so you can see step by step what are the things. Not necessary that you have to follow all the steps, but as many steps of those as you can follow. Keep it with you, even if you're not feeling that uh, you know, undergoing that thing right now. Over a period of uh, time, whenever the need is there, if you know that, okay, this is my fire extinguisher. Whenever I am needed, I can deal with it. So thank you, Sunita. Show the slides and I take your leave. I shall meet you again next Saturday to have a wonderful and a very interactive and joyful Saturday morning. Bye-bye and thank you.